Oh, what's up, guys? Got another video for you this week. Of course I do. I have a video for you every week. Damn, I am as reliable as Old Faithful. Bringing you the education. And this week we're talking about creatine, bro. Should you take it on a cut? I am pretty sure I have like five videos on this or I've done a bunch of articles or whatnot since probably 2002. I'm dating myself, but that was when I published my first article on bodybuilding.com. And my stance has been the same since 2002 for almost 20 years now. Not only should you use creatine on a cut, it's actually the most helpful on a cut. Now, I still get this question pretty much anytime I put up a Q&A on Instagram. And I think the reasoning behind it is, well, creatine causes you to retain water, so you shouldn't use it on a cut because it's gonna make you look watery or impede your fat loss. Well, first off, if we understand the underlying physiology of creatine, which is that it is stored in the muscle cell and it draws water wherever it goes. So water inside the muscle cell is going to make that muscle cell look more volumized. There's some evidence that having more fluid in a muscle cell is also gonna help with anabolism. That used to, we used to say a hydrated cell is a anabolic cell, although that's not quite as clear. And so really the question is, are you increasing intracellular water or extracellular water? Because if you're increasing extracellular water, that might make you look more watery. And I can't tell you how many times I've had people say, well, I started creatine, but I was getting bloated and uh, so I stopped taking it. No, you started creatine and you also started taking in mass gainer Russian bear 5000 with a gallon of whole milk a day. Then you started looking fluffy. It wasn't the creatine. While I've had this position for a while, we didn't really have many studies that directly assessed it, but we do have some studies now that have actually directly assessed this. And guess what? When they assess extracellular water and intracellular water after creatine use, Extracellular water stays the same and intracellular water increases. Win freaking win, baby. So not only did the amount of intracellular water increased, but the ratio of extracellular water to skeletal muscle mass actually decreased. This idea that creatine is going to make you bloated, don't take it. Uh, no, it's actually going to make you look more jacked. I store it right there. So can we please get rid of this idiotic notion that you shouldn't use creatine on a cut? In fact, by using creatine on a cut, it's going to improve your performance, which is going to help temper those performance decrements that might happen during a cut. It's going to increase the amount of water stored in the muscle cell, which is great because you're probably going to lose some of it from a reduction in glycogen during your cut. And so hopefully it's also going to help you hang on to more lean body mass during a cut. So not only should you be using on a cut, it's probably most important to use creatine on a cut versus using it in a gaining phase. Now, I would say it's so cheap and effective and safe, just use it year round. But only you can determine if you wanna spend the money to do that, but creatine monohydrate is extremely cheap. So I would say use it. Now, some users do report that creatine monohydrate can give them GI distress. And it is possible that people who are saying creatine made me bloated, are just referencing that GI distress. If you have GI distress in response to creatine monohydrate, what I recommend is to split up your five gram dosage or your three gram dosage or whatever you use. The majority of people can get by with five grams. Smaller people can even get by with three grams per day. What I'd recommend is to split that up into two doses. And usually that will solve your problems. I'd also recommend not loading creatine monohydrate. If you load it, you'll saturate your muscle cells within about a week. If you don't load it, you'll still saturate them within three to four weeks, only now you have a much lower chance of having GI discomfort. The reason I keep saying creatine monohydrate and I don't reference any other forms of creatine because all other forms of creatine are a scam and you should not buy them. Now, when I say scam, will they still work? Things like creatine ethyl ester. Yeah, it still works, not as good and costs more money, but it'll work. So if you like flushing money down the toilet, by all means, use creatine ethyl ester. Buffered creatine. Not only is there no evidence that buffered creatine is any better than regular creatine monohydrate, it costs like three to five times more per gram, and creatine is stable in stomach acid. So this idea that you need to buffer your creatine, it's just a way for them to reinvent the wheel 
so they can sell you something at a higher price point. Because what happens when the industry finds something that is cheap and effective? Everyone has it, and so everyone competes in price, and that drives price down, and you, the consumer, reap the benefit, and the companies get paid less. So they try and reinvent the wheel so they can charge you more so that they make more profit. Creatine HCL. Creatine HCL does appear to be more soluble than creatine monohydrate, and it does appear to be equally as effective as creatine monohydrate, and you might even require a lower dose. However, when you consider that it is three to five times more expensive than creatine monohydrate, creatine monohydrate is still more effective on a per cost basis. That being said, if you're somebody who struggles with GI discomfort, then perhaps creatine HCL could be an option for you since you might be able to get by with less and it's more soluble. But if you tolerate creatine monohydrate just fine, it is the only form of creatine you should be using because it is safe, effective, and it has by far the most research supporting its use. Full disclosure, I sell a product containing creatine monohydrate. Outwork Nutrition Recovery is a recovery product and one of our ingredients is creatine monohydrate, but I put in creatine monohydrate because it is the cheapest, most effective form of creatine, so we can keep our costs down and not transfer that over to you, the consumer. I could put something else in there to justify me charging you more, but we're not gonna do that because we aren't scumbags. If you guys are interested in my supplement line, Outward Nutrition, you can check it out by clicking the links in the description. If you're not, if you're just looking for good old regular creatine monohydrate, you can find it pretty much anywhere like bodybuilding.com, Amazon. Just make sure you get a company that has third-party testing and uses micronized creatine because it mixes better. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, like and subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll catch you next week.